Thank you for the introduction and correctly pronouncing my last name, <laughs> which usually doesn't happen. Uh, so uh, kudos. Uh, so yeah, I'm Dominic. I'm the co-founder of Memgraph. And uh, today I want to give you an intro uh, to uh, how Memgraph is enabling uh, next generation of applications, uh, leveraging complex uh, graph analytics uh, together with your graph storage and transactional graph use cases. So. Uh, before we actually start speaking about that, I just wanted to uh, give everyone a little bit more intro on, uh, on the company. Uh, so basically, uh, we were going for about uh, three years now. We're a team of 20. Uh, and uh, what's interesting about us uh, that uh, I come from a competitive programming background. Uh, so I managed to pull together a uh, stellar team who was working on uh, uh, graphs uh, and big data applications uh, and Facebook, Google, companies like that. Uh, and we wanted to enable what those companies have been doing uh, for a number of years uh, for every Fortune 500 enterprise and beyond, of course. Uh, so we have people uh, from the Informatics Olympiad, uh, Code Forces, stuff like that. Uh, so right now we're mostly engineering, uh, more than 75%. Uh, and we're based in uh, two places, uh, London and Zagreb, Croatia. Uh, we're venture backed uh, and, uh, and yeah, that's more about us. Uh, so when I say the next generation of uh, intelligent applications, so what do I mean? Uh, so I wanted to go through uh, more of a history uh, on databases real quick. So big data. Um, going from single machine SQL to NoSQL, uh, how NoSQL was born to scale uh, when SQL databases were dying under pressure. Uh, and that innovation was, current, was later brought back uh, to SQL. Then we, with the um, occurrence of uh, in-memory computing and the GPUs and stuff like that, uh, we got the real-time aspect of uh, graph database, of databases in general. Uh, we got uh, key value stores, we got um, uh, hybrid transactional analytical processing. Um, and uh, it's about time that we start leveraging more complex data models, which can uh, better model um, uh, all of the things happening uh, today in the world uh, and bring the two pillars from before. Uh, so performance at scale uh, and uh, bringing real time uh, at scale. Uh, to complex data models uh, as graph. Uh, and uh, like one of the interesting things uh, for me, at least personally, um, uh, the chief uh, scientist, uh, I know the chief scientist at FinSage uh, who basically does their graph stuff. Uh, and I've been following their research uh, and their, their random walk graph convolutional network uh, is really uh, state of the art uh, research of what you can do uh, with graphs, how you can leverage graphs to amplify machine learning uh, a lot. So that's uh, where we are currently uh, going towards. So the first generation uh, of graph databases uh, were great for complex data and simplicity, but have not delivered uh, on the things that I mentioned. Uh, basically, if you wanted to do complex parallel analytics, uh, more than three plus hops, uh, you would either wait a a lot of time, uh, some queries uh, would uh, time out on you. Uh, so they were really not built, especially if you are running a lot of throughput, a lot of putting a lot of pressure uh, uh, on, your, on your databases uh, concurrency uh, and because of the inefficient locking and stuff like that. Uh, definitely most graph databases either claim to scale and doesn't or it just doesn't scale. Uh, in the right way, uh, like big uh, platforms like Facebook Social Graph. Um, so that's uh, a big thing stopping uh, really big data in uh, graph applications. Uh, and the, the thing is some uh, make trade-offs to be, be good at one things, uh, really good at one things, but uh, completely not able to do uh, some, other <coughs> some other things. So these are kind of the things uh, that we uh, want to address and uh, for um, large scale machine learning and analytics and graph powered, uh, we're gonna need uh, all of those things to be very efficient on the database level. Uh, our key design drivers, uh, when we first started thinking about MemGraph, uh, which we, the principles that we hold on to 
is uh, speed. So um, it says in memory storage engine, but it's not really um, in memory only. So it's uh, kind of a combination where we take the in-memory first approach. So bringing all of the computations, leveraging uh, lock-free data structures, uh, leveraging uh, complex uh, indexes with uh, lock free skip lists uh, and things that you can do with modern Intel processors with the CMD processing and stuff like that uh, and uh, having basically a backend for um, for example like durability and for colder storage uh, have uh, disk based storage uh, but support read uh, and write heavy use cases so uh, low latency high throughput uh, that's the goal uh, and do all of that at scale. So we build that using uh, our distributed storage engine, which is completely fully sharded, uh, reads, both reads and writes. Uh, and the trick is uh, how do you uh, shard the graph? The problem with graph is, is, it's a, is that it's a very complex structure, so it's very difficult to get an optimal layout of uh, graph across the machines. So what people usually do is just do random hashing uh, or they just use another data store um, I, I like Sandra, like uh, um, Postgres, like other data stores which are not made to be sharded in a graph way and they try to do graph things and build things on top, uh, which usually works up to a certain point, then after that it completely doesn't work. So the thing that we do is basically build everything from the ground up uh, in C++ uh, which helps with performance, of course, but uh, the things that makes our graph scale is our dynamic graph partitioning algorithm, uh, which very closely resembles what big tech companies have been doing for a while. With the exception that big tech companies usually have predictable workloads, like Facebook has their social graph. Uh, so we ended up doing is uh, massively extending that functionality of dynamic graph partitioning, which is uh, at us node level. So for each node, we can decide which uh, machine the node lives on. Uh, we can have multiple caches, depending on if your uh, um, workload is more read heavy versus write heavy, because there's cache invalidation in, in write heavy workloads. Uh, but you can also uh, more efficiently position the data if you know the statistics, how it's gonna, going to be used. So we track uh, all of the hotspots whenever we need to cross machines uh, to getting data. Uh, we basically track what's happening and our algorithm is uh, using a combination of strategies uh, to, over time, minimize the, the, the latency of, uh, of the graph. Uh, one simplest thing that you can do that's very easy to explain about graph, dynamic graph partitioning is basically if you have two machines, have uh, one node which is on one machine and has one relationship on the same machine and five relationships spanning to the other machine, in most cases, it makes sense to move that node to another machine because it's more probably going to be hit uh, via those five other relationships than have this one uh, being on the same machine. So you're basically, uh, from having five relationships that go to another machine, you have reduced uh, by four. So you have only one relationship going back if you move the node. And if you do, do that um, efficient, like enough times, uh, there are certain algorithms that help with that uh, as well. Uh, in general, it's an NP-hard and NP-complete problem, uh, which, um, which is uh, difficult to, to solve uh, uh, deterministically, but you can always make a pretty good approximation in a very low amount of time. So depending on how much uh, background time you have, MemGraph will basically compute uh, the optimal layout, and uh, the, more, the, the less uh, load is there in the database, uh, in the times when you have less load, MemGraph will just start computing and figuring stuff so that your next batch of uh, very high load on the database is much faster. Uh, and the third key design driver, I spoke too much about scale, uh, third uh, biggest design driver is simplicity. So basically, um, we want to be able to um, connect with industry standard uh, integrations. So right now, uh, we support the Open Cipher and Bolt protocol, uh, which uh, makes us uh, compatible with every database uh, that uses Cipher uh, right now. Uh, and it's been a growing standard for us. That's pretty good because Open Cipher is declarative, uh, so we can leverage uh, our own um, algorithms below. 
uh, because you, you tell it what you want to get and we parallelize the entire execution so user doesn't have to do uh, deal with any of the parallelism or any of the inherent stuff uh, behind. Uh, very promising now, Gremlin uh, is working on their Gremlin bytecode, so we will be able to uh, build a virtual machine to support that as well in the future, so we're kind of happy about that. Um, but uh, like previously, it was, it was very difficult to connect Tinkerpop, which is very Java-based, uh, with our C++ uh, interface, so it's, uh, uh, you lose a lot of performance and, and you don't see a lot of the gains that you might see from using a high-performance graph database. Um, I wanted to like, walk you through the architecture of, uh, of MemGraph. Uh, one interesting thing is uh, that uh, we very often need to plug in into enterprise, existing enterprise architectures. So um, we have built this concept of called graph streams, uh, which is a custom ETL concept uh, where you can pick your extract. Uh, you can uh, use Kafka, use uh, import from the file system, from S3, HDFS, we're building more and more connectors every day. Um, and then what you need to supply is for every message that comes in, for example, through Kafka, if you choose Kafka, uh, your Python script uh, basically takes the message that comes in and uh, parses the message and figures out what query should be executed uh, at the database level. So, um, I don't know. A transaction comes in, you're a bank, you want to map the transaction between uh, two bank accounts. What you will do uh, is read the properties, oh, this is transaction from this to this, and you will uh, create a query that basically creates uh, a relationship between two accounts uh, with all of the transaction details or something similar. So the thing is, you uh, take raw data and output queries, and what Memgraph is going to take care of is efficient loading. So Memgraph is going to figure out um, how your data is going to be um, uh, batched into executing uh, into a graph. Uh, you can always uh, configure a lot of stuff with that. Uh, but the, the, the thing is, Memgraph is going to sample, Memgraph is figure out the, the optimal layout and do whatever it can to give you a reasonable uh, default and give you good performance. Uh, right now, that's somewhere around, if we're just creating a node, uh, just doing a simple stuff, it's around 70,000 uh, queries per second per thread on each uh, machine. So it's uh, quite a capable system of loading data. Just make sure you have enough RAM uh, to fit all of those in. Uh, and it's very easy to use. So uh, that query could have been formatted a little better, uh, but you get the point. Uh, yeah, you just create a stream uh, uh, from some topic and then uh, you use a transformation to do that. Uh, I've talked about no level dynamic partitioning, so I'm going to skip that here. Uh, but basically, our in-memory first um, architecture enables us to leverage atomic instructions from Intel processors and a lot of the SIMD parallelism. Uh, so we are able to more efficiently pack things for faster execution with the trade-off of using more memory. Of course, you get memory overhead. Uh, but that's something <coughs> that we're always uh, working on to improve. Uh, we, a lot of people ask us, uh, does that mean uh, you lose data when you turn off the system? No, you don't. Uh, we have full durability disk, so we do snapshots periodic, so you can, you can specify the period, but uh, there's a reasonable default specified already. Uh, and between snapshots, we do write ahead logging, so anything that happened between the two snapshots uh, basically gets uh, recorded as well. So if uh, something breaks, the l l latest snapshot will be loaded really fast, and then it's going to apply every transaction that has happened since that snapshot. That's pretty uh, common database stuff. Um, what we can leverage is, uh, because of the distributed architecture, is the massively parallel scale-out. Uh, so, for example, if you do a massive uh, expand query from uh, hundreds of thousands of nodes, uh, we can do all of that in parallel, so in parallel across the machines and on every machine across uh, uh, different cores, threads, uh, whatever uh, the things you use. So you can, um, you can if your uh, analytics is uh, basically, if you have a lot of data and your analytics is very parallelizable, uh, that's going to give you great benefits compared to other systems that uh, don't support that. Uh, and of course, you can query each of these instances, instances separately. So it's kind of a multi-master multi architecture. Uh, from the outside, so you don't know anything. Uh, you just you just ask uh, an instance to um, basically um, finish some query for you. 
uh, and internally they are gonna choose a master between themselves uh, for the purposes of transaction engine. So every transaction is gonna have, there's gonna be one single store. Um, so while you do get uh, write scalability, uh, you parallel writing to multiple machines, uh, there's a small simple step that you need to do like uh, one uh, uh, network transfer uh, for it to actually commit into the joint state uh, and then uh, your transaction is fully committed. Uh, and that's where the ACID transactions come in. Uh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, we're ACID compliant. So we do, uh, we do snapshot level isolation, which is uh, much better than most of uh, the graph uh, databases out there. Uh, and we still do it at scale. So that's basically uh, what we wanna achieve. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, open cipher query language uh, so far, and we've been uh, pretty well at optimizing that for uh, distributed. Uh, our developers do love craft beer. Uh, so uh, that was the first example that came to my mind. Um, uh, all queries are executed in a distributed fashion. And uh, if you uh, call the explain or profile commands of each query, you're going to basically see which parts are, are executed distributed, which parts uh, require communication and stuff like that. So you can really explore how uh, the planner is basically planning uh, the query. It's a cost based planner that takes a lot of statistics into consideration. Uh, but uh, we're working on also you being able to uh, override some things uh, and make it to do some something else. Uh, if you know that you have some special case, but so far uh, it's been, it gives you a reasonable default out of the box. Um, and I just put here, this here uh, so that you can see that we have uh, over, because we're over the bolt protocol for you that doesn't, uh, don't know that. Uh, but you can use all of the existing um, tools uh, and integrations uh, on the market. Uh, most of them open source, so there's bindings for like 20 languages. There's also our bindings, which um, uh, need a little bit more work to set up uh, because uh, they're inherently C++ uh, built with a non-blocking uh, network for uh, very high performance, uh, and then there's uh, Python and other uh, programming languages interfaces on top. Uh, so you can use those as well to get even more performance out of your database. Um, and one of the new things that we're working on is, uh, is as I mentioned, is machine learning uh, integration uh, with TensorFlow um, for generating the features, for example, inside the database. So you're inside the database, you match a subgraph, uh, massively parallel processing, match a subgraph, uh, compute the features, uh, push into your TensorFlow during learning and then during production. You can set up database triggers, for example, whenever a certain type of node comes in, uh, you push it to TensorFlow, TensorFlow computes uh, whatever properties uh, it was trained to compute and it pushes those back into the database so you can basically store those on the node uh, and it basically gives you a more elegant framework for dealing with graph machine learning. Otherwise you would have to export all of your graph and train and then uh, do some custom application logic uh, in order to wire all those things up. Uh, well here they can uh, do out of the box. Um, uh, complex traversals right now we also support in, uh, in addition to open cipher, we extended it to pr provide breadth first search instead of the, the default depth first search as well. So you can choose uh, one of both. And we've got also shortest path, uh, weighted shortest path, and a bunch of other algorithms uh, available. We're gonna build more and more alg algorithms. Um, right now, we're, we've been focused on graph search, but we're gonna um, expand to graph processing and graph analytics. Uh, as our platform is more and more mature, we can do uh, more things uh, with it and also enable custom Python uh, to be run directly on MemGraph. So that's gonna be also exciting for a lot of data, data scientists who use Python in their day-to-day -day work. Uh, we're based in London. We work with a lot of banks. So uh, this is kind of mandatory. It's not uh, cool like uh, all of the other features. That's, it's not exciting. Uh, but this is something that gives you confidence into your um, data security with uh, all of your basic authentication, enterprise, LDAP, Kerberos, uh, fine grace, uh, schema based and the database access control, uh, encryption reduction for compliance uh, and uh, full activity auditing. If you need that, that's available in our enterprise platform. Um, deploy, 
on uh, anything. Uh, we're Linux-based uh, on uh, Docker, uh, so you can you can run it inside Kubernetes. Uh, some of our customers want the, the OpenShift, so we have that there as well. Uh, and we need commodity instances, so Intel commodity hardware, so uh, standard architecture that you can find uh, find in all of the uh, cloud providers. Um, I just wanted to quickly touch point with uh, some of the tools that we're working on. Uh, so this is going to come in a week or two to be publicly available. We have a private, private alpha uh, for that. It's basically uh, in a developer tool which enables you to import data, model your graph schema, visualize the graph, explore the graph. Uh, and what's really good is that we've uh, integrated uh, all of these things to be um, really helpful for the developer. Uh, you can also get your query performance. You can analyze your planning of the queries. You can uh, tune uh, how do things look like? Uh, we had to build something other than a command line because it's difficult to visualize this and explore this in a command line, even though most of our developers like Vim and uh, like uh, Emacs and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, the enterprise platform has the ops management software, which basically uh, is used um, to, mo uh, to monitor performance, um, your basic uh, uh, database management, logging, alerting, uh, and stuff, stuff like that, upgrades. Uh, quickly on the use cases, uh, bank, 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 scale-ups, uh, real-time fraud, real-time risk analytics, uh, trading, high performance and trading do go together well, so that's what we are proud about. Uh, and say money laundering, uh, really deep, large-scale graph traversals, de detecting cycles, uh, a lot of interesting stuff, customer 360, uh, a bunch of data uh, that need to be gained instantly when you need to deliver some other product services or some other APIs are accessing the data about a certain user. Um, so pretty good use cases for Memgraph. Um, uh, we're doing a lot of uh, integration, customer partnerships. Uh, we like working uh, with uh, folks at Graphilion, uh, which is Tom sitting here in the audience, so you can speak to Tom about uh, running uh, really fast proof of concepts for graph databases. Uh, and uh, thank you for hearing my talk. Uh, feel free to ask some questions. Uh, Memgraph Core is free. You can go to memgraph.com slash download. It's a single machine edition right now. Uh, we'll see about later on what we can bring uh, to the community, but you can download, you can play with it. You'll get uh, basically a lot of performance and throughput out of a single machine, so you can get the feel about the uh, distributed performance as well, um, how it's going to scale. Um, and join our select channel to ask us uh, all of the questions. We have the entire engineering team there. Uh, whatever you need, uh, we're here. Uh, we do tweet. Uh, we really do uh, want to tweet more. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, our blog has some interesting um, posts about Memgraph's architecture and Memgraph's vision, and we're going to add more developer-focused uh, content there, so uh, follow us on our blog. Uh, I'm Dominic. Uh, once again, I do also have Twitter, uh, and you can send me an email if uh, you want to know anything else, and that's it. And f feel free to ask questions now. Yeah, thank you. One question. Can you say something, maybe a, a little bit about the uh, storage actually on disk? Like what, what formats you're using, or is that all proprietary information? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking like you and we all know about Neo4j and then mm -hmm. you've got all the relationships on it and that and so on. So are you using similar concepts or being entirely different? Uh, well, it, it depends. So, so the, for the two things, uh, one is for snapshots, we have a very custom format, uh, which enables us to quickly load and store. It's basically as efficiently as possible. Uh, and for other disk-based stuff, uh, we actually interface with uh, RocksDB at the moment. Okay. So RocksDB is basically storing uh, a bunch of the, the things that we need to store in disk. Uh, right now, mostly it's uh, key value properties. So if you wanna offload key value properties uh, from a property graph that are on each node to disk, uh, you can do that so you can free up more space for uh, relationships and uh, to get more efficient traversals because traversals is all what we're about. And it's all backed, so what, everything that gets stored in disk, it's backed by a uh, high performance cache uh, in memory, uh, which we, can, we have some cache predictions and what you're gonna touch, what you're gonna do. So we uh, have an algorithm for uh, evicting things from the cache and loading things into cache. So 
um, the, the vision is to get 90% of the performance of in-memory, but save 80% of the disk space. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Um, if we're using, like, when you're using U4J, uh, and you have like lots of nodes, we're normally using Elasticsearch uh, to index the nodes if we need to do any search. I'm, I'm not talking about like doing a graph search, but mm -hmm. searching for one node. Using main graph, technically, I, I wouldn't need the Elasticsearch part of the thing, except from if I need like fuzzy search or some stuff like that. Yeah, depending on what you want. Like any, yeah, I, I would like to know if you have any like benchmark or any testing. Uh, yeah, depending on what you need to do, uh, right? Uh, if you're if you're looking for full text search, no, <laughs> yeah. we don't have it yet. Uh, there's uh, uh, in the future maybe. Yeah, that's uh, some of the things that we're considering as well. Uh, but right now, no, uh, you can, if you want to do fast searching on a certain data type, uh, you can create an index. Uh, right now, indexes are very fast lock-free skip lists, uh, fast insert, fast deletes, uh, fast lookups uh, in logarithmic time. Uh, and what's good about skip lists as a data structure, they don't need rebalancing. They're automatically balanced uh, because they're probabilistic graph, uh, probabilistical. Uh, data structure. So the more data you have, the better the distribution is because probability in infinity of some distribution gives you an exact uh, logarithmic scale. So uh, that's one of the good things that you can do with, with MemGraph. So you can, but it all, it all costs more memory, of course, if you want to index uh, all of your data. So depending on what you need to do. Uh, but if um, you haven't had, if you don't have something indexed, if you want to do, if you need to do a full table, so, well, SQL calls it full table scan, we go call it full graph scan. If you need to do a full graph scan, um, the good thing is uh, even if it's, not, if it's not indexed, it can, it can leverage our massively parallel uh, processing architecture. So you can uh, divide and conquer basically across whatever the computational power you have uh, and it's gonna crunch, it's gonna merge, and it's gonna return you the results that you need. Thank you. Thank you for coming, listening.